Welcome back to Juniper Highlands. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the roof, the rainwater harvesting system, and stucco. In the last episode, I talked about how I redesigned the roof from more of a traditional peaked slope roof to uh, Pueblo style where the roof is actually tucked inside the walls. And the reason I did that was because of the high winds that are here. And uh, so I thought I would show you some examples of why I made that decision. Um, it's not uncommon for me to go for a hike and find pieces of roofing that have been ripped off of the buildings that they were attached to and then blown for miles. Um, here's an example of a building that's near where I am where the roof has been completely destroyed by the wind. So in order to keep that from being a problem, I made the decision to switch to a Pueblo style roof. So one of the things I had to do to get the roof ready was to extend the wall to its final height. Now I had left the wall short on purpose last fall because I didn't want the top of the building to turn into a swimming pool when it rains. Uh, so the wall was short, it was even with the top of the roof, and you can even see the roof line here at the bottom of this new construction. So there's a tarp over the roof and the walls, and any rain that falls on the building would then just flow over the sides. Well, now the wall is extended all the way up. And uh, I'd like to thank Nancy and Jeremiah for all their help. They came out and helped me uh, get all the cob on that. Uh, and it was a real time sensitive thing uh, because the cob will wash off in the rain. And now uh, that the top is finished, I'm able to just flip these tarps up, uh, do the cob underneath here and, uh, and the stucco. And if it rains, I can just fold them back down again. So let's go to the top and check out the roof. Okay, so here we are on top of the roof and my cat has joined us. Uh, it's a seven foot jump to get from the retaining wall to the top of the building. I don't know how he does it, but here he is. Uh, so anyway, you can see I've chosen white as the color for the roof, and that's a part of the passive design of the building. Um, because in the summer, when the sun is mostly directly overhead, the white will reflect a lot of that energy back. Uh, keeping the building cooler and in, in the winter when the sun is lower in the sky it will hit the walls heating them up when I want that. Um, you can also see that I have aluminum flashing over here that covers the seam where the roof meets the walls and then when it rains a lot of the water will float off the roof into this gutter system over here so let me show you that. One of the things I'm most excited about with this build is the rainwater harvesting system. On most buildings, rainwater is treated like a problem. So the rain falls on the roof, it goes to a, a gutter and a downspout and it's ejected away from the building and it's gone forever. Uh, well, with rainwater harvesting, you actually collect and store the rainwater and you can use it for all sorts of things. So this is up here on the roof is where that system begins. So the rain falls on the roof and then it flows off into this gutter. This is a modified driveway gutter system and I love this design because the grates here actually pop up and I can put screening on the underside uh, to screen out any you know leaf matter or bugs, that sort of thing. So the water flows off the roof into this gutter system. It goes down this channel, it hits a pipe that goes down into the building and then it flows under the foundation and goes to a cistern. So let me show you where that's gonna be. Okay, so the camera is on top of the building, positioned directly over the gutter. When it rains, the water flows off the roof, into that gutter, down a pipe that goes through the building, under the foundation, underground, and it'll come up over here to what is going to be an earth bag cistern. And then there's a supply line that will carry water back into the building. Um, but of course, this is not built yet, so I'm not able to actually harvest any rainwater at this point. So for right now, I'm using this drainage line over here uh, as an exit for the water. So when it rains, the water will just flow out over here um, until I get that finished. So the top of the wall is mostly finished, and uh, you know it's just earth bags stacked up, and then there's a tie beam on top of that. And I really regret not filming any of the tie beam installation because it's an important part of the building. And I, you know, I really wish I could share that with you guys, but I just have to tell you. Um, what I did for the tie beam was I used uh, two by fours, four two by fours sandwiched together and bolted, and then it runs the entire length of the top of the building. And I uh, hammered in 
half inch rebar every four feet or so through the tie beam and into the wall. And so the tie beam keeps the shape of the building so that over time as the building settles, it can't change shape. And uh, it definitely, the walls could never fall out or in or anything like that with that tie beam on there. Some people make their tie beams out of concrete or there's a lot of other ways to make tie beams, but that's definitely an important part of an earth bag building. Okay, so then on top of the tie beam, we just uh, filled in with lots and lots of cob so that uh, we got this nice rounded shape. Uh, and then on top of the cob is a layer of stucco base coat. Well, uh, as you can tell, I'm running out of daylight here, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was the uh, cob and stucco. Now that the top of the building is mostly just finished, uh, I'm working on the sides. So I'll, all I have to do is flip up the tarp. You know, I'm adding cob, which is probably about two thirds of the way done. Uh, and then once the cob is on and, and smooth and dry, then I'm coming back with a layer of this stucco base coat. Now later, as you know, as weather permits, I'm going to come back with a colored finished coat. So uh, ultimately the building will be kind of a nice beige that will blend in with the landscape. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the space below. Catch you next time.